Welcome back everyone to the Dark Forest. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. You're gonna like what you hear. I guarantee it. A shout out to my channel members and my patrons. If you have a scary story, email it to me and I'll check it out. Now, let's get spooky. Hello. My name is Shaggy Satire, but you can call me Shaggy for short. I'm going to tell a story of mine that I tell rarely. My own family doesn't even know about this. And while that might sound weird to you, trust me, it makes more sense to tell the internet strangers than the people I'm forced to be around. Mr. X Dreams, an amazing narrator, once read this story for his channel, and I'm happy with this discussion it got. But I believe it's time to rewrite the story to clear up confusions. So without further explanation, let me get into this story. This happened when I was much younger. I'd have to ask my parents when the camping trip happened to tell you how many years ago it was, but I could assure you it was at least a decade. Now, I'm going to use some questionable words for describing the location, words like wooded and wilderness reserve, because I don't know the best words for these things. Around a decade ago, a friend from church asked me to join his family on a camping trip to a wilderness reserve called the Oasis State Park. Of course, since this was my best friend and his family had always been nice, I said yes. Up until that point, I had only camped rarely, so the prospect of camping with a friend and his family seemed obviously amazing. So we began preparing for a weekend when I wasn't busy. I got my own tent, my own sleeping bag, and my own supplies. Once all that was gathered, the father of my friend came and picked me up and my parents waved me goodbye. There are quite a few things I remembered from that trip. The amazingly hostile yet beautiful New Mexico countryside, the scenery, and the campsite. The New Mexican wilderness isn't something a lot of people fantasize about camping in, at least not so far as I know. But Oasis State Park is different. The camping spots are all nice, even if the best ones are already taken. There's a pretty lake, lots of wildlife, and I hate to admit, more trees than I've ever seen in town. Yeah, I know nobody thinks of multitudes of trees when they think of New Mexico, and for good reason. They aren't the most common occurrence in the plains unless planted by people. Regardless, Oasis has enough for me just to use the term woods for the sake of brevity. Anyways, we found ourselves a plot and began setting up our tents. By afternoon, the tents were set, and me and my friend ditched his oh-so-boring younger sister in favor of exploring the park. The memories are fantastic. We found a snake by the lake and watched it drink from the water before slithering off quickly. We explored a place I remembered was very sandy. We watched a roadrunner doing its thing. We played all day after lunch and saw so many amazing things that by the end of the day, I would have never thought anything could go wrong. We finished the day like you always do, by collecting sticks and starting a fire to eat s'mores and tell ghost stories. None of the stories were scary, probably because me and my friend were kids and his sister was an even younger child. That and his father was lead singer at our church and making children cry was bad for reputation. So by ghost stories, I mean like little jokes of stories designed to make us giggle more than cry. Yeah. It was lame, but what do you expect? Anyways, shortly after the stories were said and the s'mores were eaten, we retired, me to my tent, and my friend, his father, and his sister to their tent. Now for this setup, I'll explain positioning. This is all going to be important. My tent was at one of the edges of the plot, and my friend's tent was at the exact opposite. This is for privacy reasons. Now at my end of the plot was a mini trail that led through the thick brush to the lake. Also, about three feet from my tent was a little tree. I don't know what kind of tree it was, but it was still young and small. The trail to the lake was to the left of my tent entrance. The lake was behind it, and a thin tree line sat across from a trail in front of my tent. That trail in front of my tent led to the bathrooms. So I went to bed without a single bit of fear, 
and before I did, I went ahead and urinated on the tree outside my tent because of laziness. Screw the two-minute walk to the bathrooms when nature's toilet was right outside my tent. So I finished closing up my tent for the night and climbed into my sleeping bag to go to bed. I don't know how long I slept, but when I woke up, I had to use the bathroom. And it wasn't the kind of potting I could do on a tree, or at least, not reasonably. So I, not being a moron who'd wander through the dark, grabbed my little lantern. I flipped on my LED lantern and I unzipped the inner flap of my tent before the outer, as if that little nylon net could protect me from what I was about to see. Now I should mention that outside of cities in New Mexico, it's quite common to hear coyote howls. It's a nightly occurrence when camping. Heck, even up in the little village like Logan, you could hear the howls from your bedroom. It isn't so unnerving when you're in the house, but when you have some flimsy nylon wall to protect you and that's it, well, it isn't the most comforting sound. As I unzipped my tent flap, I did hear a few howls, but they were distant and not worrying. What stunned me into stillness was a very large howl from the direction of the lake, about a yard from my tent at most. This howl was different though. It had the feel of a coyote howl, but it was deeper, and it lasted longer. I simply sat there petrified at what I heard. I wouldn't be able to guess at how long I sat there breathing hard with my fingers still grasping the zipper, but however long it may have been was just long enough for the thing that made a howl to come up to the trail next to my tent. Suddenly, I heard the crunching of claws on dirt and after that, claws on the rocks that made our camping plots. Then, I saw the largest shadow made by a living creature that little kid me had ever seen. It lumbered heavily in the direction of the sparse tree line where I assumed the other howling had come from. But before it got past the tree line, it stopped. I realized only then that I was both lit like a candle and had not been trying to silence my heavy breathing. By then it was too late as the hulking thing lumbered even closer to the tree and into the light of my lantern. As dim as that little LED light was in the distance, it was just barely enough to make out details. I'd like to note a few very important details that stuck out to me as odd. It had roughly the fur coloring of a coyote, but that classic dogman head shape with the tiny pointed ears too small to make sense. It also made strange noises as it lowered to all fours in front of my tent. Popping sounds, like joints rubbing together that I could only assume its knees busting out of their standing joints and fell into different joints to support all fours. It briefly ignored the very obviously frightened kid me in my tent as it sniffed the tree I had urinated on. The breaths were similar to a dog's, but longer and far deeper, almost like a horse's. Then, that thing turned to me and stared straight into my eyes. Its eyes didn't glow, they didn't peer into my soul, but they were unbelievably unnatural. Above all things I saw in those eyes, I saw a predator. Have you ever been in a position where you made eye contact with a beast you know is stronger than you? Something you know could just slaughter you. You know it knows you know. Just looking for seemingly so damn long that I thought for sure I'd be just a bloody stain by the time anyone reached my tent. Screaming would do nothing. I doubted a gun would even hurt this thing. But despite every feeling in my gut, despite the dread of knowing it was a predator and I was the prey, I didn't die. Instead, it turned, slowly, ever so slowly, and just frickin' sprinted off into the woods just freaking gone into the night faster than it came. I have one personal friend who knows, and he jokes what made that dog man come was the piss on that tree, like I had marked my territory or something dumb like that. Or maybe it wasn't hungry, or most improbable, it just had enough morals to not kill a kid. I'll never really know. Needless to say, I didn't go to the bathroom, I just put my lantern away, closed my tent flap, and held it all night. I don't remember sleeping that night. I might have. I might not. But if I did, it was dreamless. 
I do remember that I tried to hide this experience the next day, asking if my friend and his family heard any howling. While they did hear the howling, they told me they just ignored it thinking it was a coyote doing coyote stuff. I was encouraged to just ignore it, as if I was a city kid who had never heard a coyote howling before. The next day, I stayed as close to my friend as possible while exploring and had nearly forgotten the encounter by lunch. Somehow, the safety I had been feeling during the day put the beast out of my mind, until we found tracks in that super sandy place. Coyote tracks. I think seeing those tracks confirmed to me that it wasn't some dream, and because that I showed enough fear that night to convince my friend's family to let me sleep in their tent. Even in the comfort of a warmer tent, more people means more warmth, and in the presence of an adult, the father, and two other people, friend and his sister, I couldn't sleep that night. I nearly drifted into sleep, and then I heard the coyote howl. The next day, I pretended to be sick, and got my mother to drive up and take me home a day or two early. The worst camping trip of my life. It ruined not only my whole summer, but also ruined camping. I haven't been camping without a tent buddy since, and I don't plan to. Even then, I'm not very comfortable, always listening to strange noises and acting paranoid. This really messed me up, I guess, being forced to see that a human, top of the food chain, is utterly powerless in front of such a beast. Seriously. I don't think I could press hard enough to make everyone realize how powerless I felt. Even today when I think about this, I remember two things first. Those eyes. And that feeling. Just writing this sent multiple shivers up my spine. That said, you might be asking me why I'm talking about this again if it terrifies me so much. Simple. I want answers, and I want to add to the conversation. I feel the need to add this encounter so that others can experience it, maybe contact me with questions or answers. So let me say now, if you have any idea what happened that night, please respond or DM. If you have any questions, go ahead and do the same.